Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are here to talk about Give Big and specifically managing your matching grant on the Mighty Cause platform. Hopefully, many of you, some of you either attended yesterday's training or if you're watching this recording later, uh, you've already watched the other matching grant training, which focused primarily on matching grant strategy. Our focus for today's presentation is going to be primarily how to make use of the matching grant tools that exist on the platform uh, to help complement any of that matching grant strategy that you're going to be building into your campaign for Give Big. So again, if you have more questions on strategy, looking for more resources about matching grant strategy, uh, make sure you visit the resources page on the Washington Gives website, uh, and you can access a recording uh, of that previous training. Today's agenda, we are going to do a quick overview of matching grants on the platform. I am going to jump into the platform to give you a live walkthrough of where you can find the matching grant tool in your nonprofit's dashboard and how you can set up a matching grant, what some of the options are that you have access to. Very quickly, we'll go over just a few steps to success again focusing primarily on the technical how-to with today's training, but cover just a couple of ideas when it comes to making the most out of your matching grant. Uh, we'll cover a few FAQs related to matching grants on the platform, and then finally leave some space at the end for live Q&A. So if you do have questions as we go throughout the training, please feel free to type them into the Q&A panel uh, on the, the Zoom control panel. So first, high level overview of matching grants on the platform. Um, what's it really all about? What can you do with it? So in, in concept, of course, you're going to work to secure a matching grant outside of the platform. You may have an existing matching grant donor, a corporate partner, a group of um, board members, perhaps, there is going to be some uh, individual or groups of individuals that your organization can work with to secure a matching grant. Once you secure that match, you have the ability to talk to that matching grant donor, understand their needs, goals, how do they want to impact, make an impact with their match. And once you have all of that information, then you're going to come to the Washington Gives platform, your nonprofit's profile page, your dashboard, and post that matching grant on the platform. And the reason that we encourage you to do so, there's a couple of key reasons. First, when you post that matching grant to your Washington Gives page, there will be a matching grant tile, as we refer to it, uh, that shows on your profile page that adds extra urgency and excitement to your donors when they visit your page. They'll be able to see in real time the countdown, how much time is left in the matching grant that you are offering, as well as how many dollars or how many donors are left needed to reach your match. So real time throughout the campaign, donors will be able to engage with your match opportunity and add extra urgency to make them want to make their gift right away. The second reason is that it allows the Give Big campaign to accurately understand and represent all the giving that's gonna happen as a part of this campaign. While your matching donor may decide to pay a check directly to your nonprofit uh, to, to make their actual matching grant gift, that match is coming in because of this Give Big campaign. And so the Give Big team wants to make sure that they are accurately tracking that. So posting that match to your page gives them the information to know how many participating nonprofits actually did secure a match as a part of this event. Finally, uh, it has the ability to give your organization some extra visibility through the website. So on the search page, there's a filter that allows donors to specifically look and find just organizations that have a matching grant. Um, we all know that uh, donors love a match. 
just like the average consumer loves a sale, a promotion, um, you're giving a donor extra opportunity to make their donation go further. And so there are definitely donors that specifically seek out match opportunities. So by creating a match and posting it to your Washington Gifts page, you're allowing your organization to now be found for that specific donor, extra, um, extra visibility on that search page, as I mentioned. So just a couple of the key reasons why you'd want to post your matching grant on the platform. When it comes to the types of matching grants that are available on the platform, there's really a lot of flexibility. There are a few different high level types of matches. And then once you select the type of match that you're planning to post, there are additional settings, conditions, et cetera, that you can use if you'd like to further define, further refine your match opportunity. So the most common type of match, what probably many nonprofits participating in this campaign will use is a one-to-one -one dollar for dollar match. In this example that you can see here on the page, $25,000 matching grant and dollar for dollar as you raise funds, if you raise $25,000 through your profile page as a part of this campaign, you will unlock that $25,000 matching grant. So that's the most common, what many nonprofits will probably do. And that's gonna be the default settings. When you go to create a matching grant on the platform, and I'll show this in a moment, that's gonna be the default settings. So if, if you're wanting to keep your match super simple, please keep in mind that's absolutely an option for you. And that's how the default match and grant will be set up for you. Should you want to try something new, be a little bit more creative with the way that you're offering a match, there are lots of other options as well. Uh, you don't have to limit your match to a one-to-one. -one. You can do a two-to-one match. You can do a three-to-one match. You can decide to match only 50% of each gift that comes in. You can also choose whether you'd like to do a cumulative threshold match. So rather than dollar for dollar as you meet your, as donations come in, unlocking your match, you can make it completely conditional so that only when you raise the total 25,000 do you unlock your match, for example. But you don't need to tie it to a dollar amount only. You can choose to have that cumulative threshold be based on a number of gifts made to your page and or a number of unique donors. So let's say that your goal for this campaign is not to raise a certain amount of money. It's not a $10,000 goal, for example, but you're looking to engage 50 unique donors. That's your give big goal. You may choose to add the matching grant to your page and you only unlock that matching grant if there are 50 unique donors that make a donation to your page. So there are different options available, as I mentioned. Think through what really aligns well with your nonprofit's goals for the campaign, as well as maybe if the funder has something specific in mind that they want to encourage, you can work with them to, to identify that and how to best use that on the platform. Uh, many matching grant donors are gonna be happy to allow you to be flexible with using that match in the way that it will leverage the most additional support. Um, so I definitely encourage you to think about what your goals are and then identify the type of matching grant that's going to best align with that goal. And as I mentioned, once we get into the platform, I'll talk about some of the other settings available, some of the other things that you can do, but just wanted to provide a quick high level overview of the key different types of matches you can try to create. Once you do create a matching grant, as I mentioned earlier, it will display on your page. And that's why we encourage you to post the match there. So you just saw on the last page and you're seeing it again here, um, that information about this specific matching grant, that's what will show on your page. It'll explain what type of match, how much time is left. If you want to showcase the logo and the name of the matching donor, you can certainly do that. Um, and it will count down and or count up in real time so that 
as you are going through your Give Big campaign, donors will be able to see that there's only $500 or for example, three donors left needed to unlock your match. When you do post a match, there will be a little icon that gets added to the donate button on your page, adding that extra urgency and excitement, reinforcing to the donor that there is an active matching grant live for this page. You'll have that matching grant tile, as I mentioned, that shows on your organization's profile page, which includes all the details of your match, as well as that live countdown. And finally, <clears throat> in the search, as I mentioned earlier, there's a special filter on the search page where donors have the ability to specifically look for organizations that have a matching grant. So if you have a matching grant posted to your page, your nonprofit's profile will show in that match. So I'm just about to pause from this deck and jump into showing you the platform live. Um, but before I did that, I just wanted to quickly orient you to where you can find this matching grant tool on the platform. So when you log into your user account on the platform and visit your nonprofit's dashboard, you'll see down the left-hand side of the screenshot here, you're seeing the dashboard where you access all the different tools that your nonprofit can manage as a part of your access to the platform. The matching grants feature is gonna live underneath the fundraising tools folder. So you see fundraising tools, clicking on fundraising tools will open up a set of fundraising tools and that's where you'll find matching grants. Opening that up will allow you to create a matching grant, access information about past matching grants, edit an existing match, download reporting in relation to a match, et cetera. So quick orientation from your dashboard, you'll go to fundraising tools and then matching grants. Now I'm going to actually jump into a live page on the platform where I can show you this information. So from here, you can see I'm now on that dashboard that I was just showing in that screenshot there without doing a full walkthrough of the dashboard here because that's available in previous webinar recordings as well as in help resources. Um, the overview screen is what you will land on when you access your nonprofit's dashboard. The organization page, that is the profile page that you will build out. That's the link you'll be sharing with donors to get them to give. That's where your matching grant will display when you add it here. But again, if you click on the fundraising tools folder, you'll see all of these fundraising tools come available for you. So you wanna click on the matching grants feature in order to access, build, edit, uh, any matching grants as a part of your Give Big campaign. So before I go any further in showing you the tool here, I just wanted to call attention to this little question mark icon that you'll see in the bottom of my screen. Clicking on this question mark icon, you'll see it follow you throughout your nonprofit's dashboard. That is access into the help resources available through the platform. So right here, because I'm on the matching grants page, trying to create a matching grant, the suggested help articles that I'm seeing featured for me are information about matching grants. So these might be helpful articles if, if you're having uh, some questions while you're trying to build a match, wondering what's possible, how you can set it up. You also have the ability to search and browse all of the help topics here or you can click contact and submit a ticket to our help desk if you are needing further support with your match. So just wanted to call that out while we were here on this page. So for most of you, when you come to this page for the first time, you won't have any existing live matches available. I've created this sample match and I'll open this in a moment just to show you, walk you through what tools are available. But in order to create a new match, you're gonna come to the upper right hand corner of this match manager and click the create button. When you click that create button, you're gonna open up a new form where you have the ability to fill in all the details for your matching grant. 
So we'll talk about all of those details, what you can do, what's optional, uh, et cetera. But you're going to want to click on that Create button in order to start a new matching grant from scratch. So on the page here, you'll see this organization has a live matching grant available. You can see right here in the table some of the key details. When is this matching grant sent to end? What's the name of the match? What is the type of the match? What's the overall value? And how much is left? So these are key stats that you can see for any matches that you have available. You have the ability to edit the match. Uh, once you have created a match, you can always come back in and edit. If you make a mistake, if you need to make a change, you can do that. If you want to stop the match for some reason, if you need to close it, you can do that. Or if you'd like to download a donations report for any donations associated with this matching grant, you can do that as well. You'll see you also have a separate table to show you any upcoming matches. So for any matches that you're planning to have available once early giving opens or that you're waiting to sort of unlock or unveil to the public for um, May 3rd and 4th, I definitely encourage you to set those matching grants up ahead of time. Uh, matching grants don't have to start immediately when you create them. You can set them up to start at a future time frame. So for example, you could set up a matching grant today and have it not start until midnight on May 3rd. So creating your matching grants in advance will give you less to do on the actual um, uh, days of the event. You'll also be able to double check and see what upcoming matches you have that will become available in the future. And then finally, you can see any past matching grants. So any matches that you've had available in the past, you're seeing all those same key details, as well as the ability to download the donations report associated with those uh, matches as well. If you'd like to download a full report of all your match history, line line by line of different matching grants that you've had, you can do that with the download full report button here. So now I'm going to actually open up this existing matching grant to get into the weeds of some of the features and tools and flexibility that you have within a match. So as I mentioned, I set this match up um, earlier today so that we could walk through a live example. You'll be prompted to enter the name of the match sponsor. This can be whatever name you'd like um, to, you know, to have displayed available. Uh, so if you get multiple matching, multiple donors to contribute to one specific match, you can choose to call this whatever you'd like. If your matching grant donor would like to remain anonymous, you always have the ability to click on this button and hide that name publicly. You'll still have the name here so that for your reporting on the back end, you can see what match in particular this uh, was related to, but you can still honor that matching donor's wish to be anonymous. You'll enter your match value, and then you have the ability here where you see this SunTrust logo. You have the ability to add a one-to-one -one image logo to be associated with your matching grant in particular. So of course, if you do have a corporate partner sponsoring your match, we encourage you to use their logo. If you don't have a corporate partner sponsoring your match, if it's an individual, if it's a group of individuals, et cetera, you're welcome to put another image, perhaps reinforce the logo for your own organization here in this logo space. It's optional. You don't have to add an image or logo there, but if it helps you uh, and if it helps um, add additional promotion, for your match sponsor, then we definitely encourage you to upload, upload the logo there. You have a space to add a title for your match. And as I mentioned, start time and end time. And as you can see, you can select the start date as well as the time of day and end time, end date and end time of day. So you can have a matching grant that goes for 24 hours, for the full 48 hours of the campaign, you could choose to have a matching grant that's only available for a certain hour if you'd like. Depends on how many matching grants you have available and how that fits into your larger campaign strategy, if that's something that makes sense for you to do. But you have the ability to choose the exact start and end time of every specific matching grant that you set up. 
You can set up more than one matching grant to be active on your page at a time. So if you have multiple matching grants that you're able to secure, there's a number of different ways that you can take advantage of that on the platform. You can either group them all together into one larger match pool and have one match that lasts throughout the campaign. You could have multiple simultaneous matches available if you'd like to, or you can sequence your matches. So let's say you have three matches, uh, you have one match and as soon as that expires or is met, you unlock match two. When that expires or is met, you unlock match three. So there's lots of different ways that you can set up uh, matching grants on the platform if you do have multiple. I think we'll cover a little bit more of that later. But the start and end time allow you to be flexible with what you want to do with those matches. And as I mentioned earlier, the most common option, uh, the default that you'll see when you first create a new matching grant is going to be a one-to-one 100% -one, match of each donation made on the platform. So if you'd like to keep it simple, you can leave this default as it is, scroll right down to the bottom, enter the email address for who you'd like to receive a notification when the match is met, and you can go ahead and complete. So again, for those of you that want to keep it simple, feel free to, to do that, and you can stop listening for the next couple of minutes. Um, but I want to go over some of the other uh, more flexible options if you do want to get a little creative with it. So if you'd like to add an additional criteria that you only match up to a maximum dollar amount of each gift. Let's say, for example, you have a $10,000 match. You wanna make sure that you don't have one donor come to the platform and make a $10,000 gift and use up that entire match. It's a great problem to have if you have a $10,000 donor that wants to come and unlock your entire match. Uh, but you may choose that you want to limit it and you really only want $100 of each donor's gift to be eligible for a match. Or maybe you only want $1,000 of each donor's gift to be eligible for a match. You have the option to set that criteria if you'd like. I also mentioned that there are a few different cumulative uh, threshold matches available. Uh, let me just, sorry, reverse here. By default, as I mentioned, it's gonna be 100%, so one-to-one -one match. If you'd like to do a two-to-one match, you can just up that percentage to be 200% of each donation gets matched. Three-to-one match, 300% of each donation. So that's how you would uh, make an update there if you'd like to do uh, a different percentage than just one-to-one. -one. The other type of match is that cumulative threshold, as I mentioned, either based on total dollars raised, or if you'd like to set up a match that you only unlock when you reach 500 donations, for example, to your page, or 100 unique donors to your page. So again, different options there depends on goals of your campaign, your organization, as well as perhaps your matching donor. Beyond the match type, there are a few other conditions that you have available. All of these are optional. First, you can choose if you'd like to set a minimum donation amount before a match is applied. So if you'd like to make sure, uh, encourage donors to give higher amounts or make sure that they have to meet a certain minimum before they're eligible for the match, you could decide that only, matches, only donations made at $50 and above become eligible for your match, for example. You can choose whether you'd like to include offline donations in your match. So if you do have this setting checked, then any donations made online via the platform to your page and any offline donations that you post to your organization's page during the campaign, both will track against your matching grant. So that's an optional setting depending on the goals of your organization, how you plan to use or incorporate any offline donations. Uh, and the final setting is that you can choose whether to include fundraisers, donations made to any fundraisers for your organization in the match. So let's say you have a few different individuals that create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers on behalf of your nonprofit. 
you can choose whether you'd like donations made to their page to also be eligible to count against your match. By default, both of these settings are going to be checked for you because most donor, most nonprofits prefer to have offline donations count and prefer to have donations made to their fundraisers also count. But if for some reason your circumstances are different, you'd prefer to limit it to online gifts only, or you don't want fundraiser gifts to be eligible for your match, all you have to do is go ahead and uncheck that box and you can control those settings. As I mentioned before, this email address that you enter here at the bottom is the email address that will receive a notification when the matching grant is complete. So you can choose if you'd like to insert here the email address of the actual matching donor. If you do that, then when you unlock your $10,000 match, the platform will automatically send an email to that matching donor, letting them know that your organization has completed the match it will also provide them with a link should they choose they want to make that matching grant donation online. Most nonprofits prefer to, instead of putting the email address of the matching donor, they prefer to put the email address of their own administrator, their own primary contact. That way, your internal team is getting the notification when the matching grant is met. And then you can choose how and when and in what format you'd like to communicate to the matching donor that their match has been met. That's more common, it's optional, up to you depending on your relationship with the matching grant donor and how you wanna work it, but you're welcome to put your own email address so that you receive the notification and again, you can remain in control when, you, <clears throat> uh, when and how you communicate with your matching donor. <clears throat> so that covers the majority of all of the settings that you have access to here in your matching grant tool. As I mentioned, once you create a match, you do have the ability to make edits. So if you need to change the time, if you were late setting up your match and you got a donation the first day of early giving, but you forgot to set your match up until the second day of early giving, you can go ahead and edit and backdate the start of that match so you capture that early gift. And again, you can always access a detailed don uh, donation report for any donations that were associated with that match. Now that I've shown kind of the back end of the creation, I'm gonna to go to the front side of this organization's page. I'm in edit mode here, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch. And I'm gonna show you the <clears throat> matching grant uh, tile, if you will, uh, the display on the page here. So you can see, because I've added that SunTrust logo, it's visible here on the page. There is a progress bar that's gonna be counting or moving forward as my organization gets donations in against our match. This progress bar is going to tick forward, showing visitors to my page, social proof of my uh, matching grant. Um, you'll see how much time is left, organization that is being benefited, as well as the sponsor name if I've chosen not to hide it, and the conditions of that match. As I mentioned, it was a simple match that I created here, just a one-to-one -one match. So this is what you will see visible on your page if and when you do have a matching grant active. The last thing I wanna show here before I jump back into the deck for a few minutes is the reporting tool. So I'm not gonna go over all of these reports, um, lots of great tools that you can get into here, but one I specifically wanted to call out uh, is the donor retention report. This is tangentially related to matching grants, but it's so important that I wanna make sure that I called it out while I had a chance uh, to share with you all today. This donor retention report is something that you'll have access to, again, through that reports folder on your dashboard. You can use this report during this year's giving event. Come to this report and you can filter to look at Give Big Washington donors from last year and quickly access a report that is downloadable that will tell you what donors that, have, that gave last year 
during the Give Big campaign have either already made their donation during this year's Give Big campaign or have not yet made a donation during this year's Give Big campaign. So very quick access um, that you can uh, use this donor retention report to in real time during the Give Big campaign this year, quickly uh, get donor contact information so that you can focus on uh, reaching out to those unretained donors and hopefully improve your donor retention, improve your overall uh, engagement and stewardship with your donor base as a part of your campaign. So now I'm going to jump back into the deck for a few more minutes uh, before I turn to some questions. So um, again, feel free to type questions in if you have any. So once you have built your match out on the platform, following all those tips that we just talked about, the next step is to market your match. Really make the most out of the fact that you have this match available. In any emails that you're sending, make sure to specifically call attention to the match opportunity that you have available. If you have the full match left, if there's only part of the match left, make sure that that match is visible as a part of your email campaign. Same on social media as well. Social media is a great place to provide real-time updates to your donors and supporters on the progress you're making towards your match, um, <clears throat> how close you are to meeting it. Add information on your website as well as the um, profile page on your platform. And really, anywhere you're talking about your campaign, anywhere you're promoting it, if you're doing flyers, if you have an event, whatever it might be, make sure that you make that match a key part of your talking points because matches are exciting for donors. They want to know about that. It gives them that extra incentive, that extra reason to make their gift. Once your match is met, you'll wanna close out your match campaign. So <clears throat> when uh, if you have a $10,000 match and you meet that, you don't have to take any specific steps on the platform to close that match. It will close automatically because you've met the threshold. But a couple of uh, post-match steps you will want to take is one, receiving the actual matching grant funds. So as I mentioned, your matching grant donor always has the option to pay their match online via the platform if they'd like to. Many matching grant donors will prefer to pay via check or some other offline source directly to your nonprofit. And that's absolutely fine. It's completely up to you and your matching donor how you wanna receive those funds, but make a plan for what that's gonna look like so that you can follow up with that matching donor after the match is met. Update your donors, especially those donors that gave during the match and their donation was doubled or tripled. Um, they want to know that information. They want to, they want to be reinforced uh, after they make their gift, why their gift was helpful, what impact it can have. So make sure that you share that information with your donors, let them know you've met the match, let them know what that will help your organization accomplish in the community. Uh, and finally, access match reporting. So I showed you within the matching grant tool where you can download the detailed donations report so that you can verify either for your internal records or for any records that you're sharing with the matching grant donor exactly what donations counted against that match. I talked about this a little bit already while we were in the tool, um, but we definitely encourage if you are able to try and secure multiple matching grants as a part of your Give Big campaign. And there's lots of different ways to make the most out of these grants if you are able to get more than one. As I mentioned, if you were to get, for example, three or four board members that all want to give $250 to, your, uh, to a match pool, you can go ahead and combine all of those funds together and just provide one match across your giving day campaign. If you have multiple small donors committing to a match, that's likely the best way to make use and make the most impact of that match. If you do get larger match amounts committed to you, or you have sponsors or matching grant donors that have distinct ideas for what they wanna do with their match, um, then you can choose to either um, 
to offer multiple matches throughout your campaign. You can choose to perhaps start a match right the first day of early giving to provide extra incentive to donors to come right out of the gate and make their donations. Uh, you can do one match for each day of the Give Big campaign, for example. And as I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to automatically queue these matches. So if you just have three or four matching grants um, and you just want to ideally get through all of those, um, as you, the campaign goes on, you can set up the match so that match two unlocks when match one is met, match three unlocks when match two is met, for example. So that way you almost create an opportunity where there is continually a match being made available uh, throughout your Give Big campaign. So lots of different options there. And if you only get one matching grant, that's still wonderful and really has a great opportunity to impact your campaign. But if you do have the ability to get more than one, you can step it up and amplify and do some additional fun creative things to really get more out of it. So just a few uh, FAQs that I wanted to call attention to and Matt, um, mention here uh, before we open it up for questions. Is your matching grant timing flexible? Yes. You can choose the start date and the start time. So you can have your match go for the full length of the Give Big campaign if you'd like, or you can limit it just to a certain day, time, hour, et cetera. You can choose to set a minimum or a maximum donation for your, mount, uh, for your match. So only donations made over $50 become eligible, or you're only willing to match the first $100 of each donor's gift to count towards your match. Those are both optional settings that you don't have to use, but if you'd like to, they're available for you. Do offline donations count towards your match? Yes, they can if you'd like them to. If you don't want them to, you're welcome to uncheck that setting, but you have the choice. Do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, can peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages have their own match? The answer is yes. On an individual fundraiser page, you can create a matching grant. On your organization's profile page, you can create a matching grant. If you choose to create a different type of peer-to-peer -peer campaign, for example, a team fundraising campaign where you have a group of individuals fundraising for you, you can create a match at that team fundraising page level. Plug for next week's webinar if you want to learn more about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools on the platform. Make sure to sign up for next week's training where we'll dig deeper into the tools related to peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising. But just know you can have a matching grant at any of those different places. Uh, will your matching grant total automatically include be included on your page total? Yes, by default. If you have a $5,000 match and you meet that $5,000 match, that $5,000 total will show on your profile page metrics. If for some reason you don't want it to, you're welcome to uncheck that setting and control how and when uh, you uh, update that page total. Um, but by default, that matching grant amount will show on your page total. Will your matching grant total be included in your leaderboard total? No. By default, leaderboards only include online donations made through the platform. So if your matching grant donor happens to make their matching grant online, then yes, their match amount will count on your leaderboard total. Uh, but if not, then it will not. Offline donations, um, I believe this year, will be included on the leaderboard total. But matching grants will not automatically be counted on your leaderboard total. So just wanted to cover a few of those key questions that we often get as it relates to matching grants. And now I'm going to open it up. I see we have a couple of questions that have come in. So I will uh, work through those. And then if you have a question you haven't posted yet, feel free to do that now. OK, question. Uh, is it possible to add several email addresses to receive notification when the match is accomplished? Great question. But no, at this point, there's only one email address. So. Choose 
whoever, uh, either you can choose to use an info at email if you'd like you know, multiple people within your organization to be able to receive that notification or choose one contact within your organization that will then communicate that out, forward that on to other people that need that information. Um, question, would it be possible to save a match as a grant? I mean, as a draft, sorry. Um, so there's not the ability to save um, a matching grant as a draft, but if you'd like to go in and start to build out a match, but you're not 100% sure what the final version is gonna be like, you can always create it to start in the future. If you create a matching grant with a future start date, it's not gonna be visible or public anywhere on your page. You will only be able to see that when you go into that match manager in your upcoming matches. And you can always choose to go into that upcoming match and edit it to change the start date once you confirm, once you're ready to have it visible on your page. So there's not technically a save as a draft feature, but you're welcome to set up a start date in the future and then it wouldn't be visible on the page until that actual start date is met. Um, last question that I see here, if you have a minimum donation set, does that deter donors who want to make less? <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking that means donors that want to give a smaller donation amount that's below your threshold. Potentially it could. Um, it's, that's one of the things that, that you will have to consider when you choose what conditions you do or don't want to set to your match. Um, certainly, I wouldn't recommend having a minimum threshold that was a very high level, uh, $1,000 or higher, for example, because then you will likely alienate the average donor that's going to be giving to your campaign. You know your donors best. You know what size average gift your donors happen to give. So keep that in mind. If you do decide to set a minimum threshold, make sure that you make that decision of what that amount is in line with what the average donor gives to your nonprofit as a part of their Give Big campaign so that you don't uh, unintentionally alienate any of those donors. Um, question about the leaderboard. Uh, no, there is not a setting where you can choose to have your matching grant count on the leaderboard totals. That's ju it just is not a function of the platform that it will count. So sorry if I made that unclear before. And I think that covers all of the questions that we have posted so far today. If you do have additional questions as you are planning your campaign, as you're inputting your matching grant, or once your matching grant is live and you've started to receive donations, you can always contact our support team at wagives at mightycause.com. As I mentioned, when you're on that matching grant manager page, building out your match, if you click on that question mark icon, you'll get access to the existing matching grant resources that we have available, as well as um, the ability to contact our customer support team by email if you have a, a specific question that you're not able to find the answer to uh, through the platform help tools. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's training. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. The webinar recording will be made available on the Washington Gives website in the future. Um, and again, check it, that out to sign up for future trainings. Thank you.